Well, tonight I want to speak to you something that's close to my heart. And I hope it'll get close to your heart tonight. And that is looking for lost people. Looking for lost people. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, reading in verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they faded and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And saith unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labors into his harvest. I think if there's anything that we're short of tonight, and that is looking for lost people. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere. You got to see people lost until you check them out. And you know it's so easy to pass people up. If there's anything that I feel short, I'm, I'm sure you do, and that is, Doc, we pass people up. He told about Dr. Rice. I was in Atlanta Airport. The only thing I like about Atlanta Airport is the restrooms. I go in the restrooms, not the ladies, just some men. <laughs> and, and there's got about 20 stalls down through there, and I, I pass out tracks. And I was in there one day, and you can see their feet under there, and I was throwing tracks. I said, I want to give something to read. They said, I don't want it. Go ahead and take it. I threw it under there and said, thank you. I said, okay. I got out here, and I saw Dr. Rise over there reading a the book. I went over and tapped him on the shoulder, and I said, uh, are you saved? He looked over them glasses like that, and he said, Carl, are you the one? Give me that track. <laughs> but I said this. Paul said in Romans 1.14, I am debtor. You can pay your spiritual debt just passing out tracks. I see a lot of people, and they claim to be saved and never carry a track on. I've said this. I will, and I've never been called yet. I'll give anybody five hundred dollars ever catch me without a track. You're not going to catch me. The only place you're going to catch me, and you're not going to catch me there. If you do, I'll kill you. <laughs> That's in the shower. I, I mean, I believe in the track ministry, amen. I had a preacher pick me up at the airport, and I said, uh, "If you got, if you got some of your tracks on you, I, I feel God. If I don't have some tracks, and I, I pass these out here, I don't need to pass these from another church." And, he went to checking it on. He said, I, I, I guess I left him. I guess I left him in my other suit. He said, son, go look in his love compartment. It's full. Came back in. Said, not any out there, daddy. Got to the church. I said, where's your track rack? I go in church that don't even have a track rack. If you want a track, you've got to go down in the basement and take a flashlight. And when you find them, they're so dirty you can't use them. I said, where's your track rack? And he told his secretary, did you... Uh, did you order that, those tracks? And she said, well, no, you didn't, you didn't tell me to. Now, you can look for lost people and pay your debt with gospel tracks. Just passing out tracks. We pass them up. If you check any of these fellows up here, their pockets are loaded with tracks. Where's Carlene? <laughs> TV room. You got tracks on you. I guarantee if you look in his pocket, his pockets are filled with tracks. Amen? Amen? <laughs> Don't lie, God. <laughs> Doc's already informed him of <laughs> it. I'll bet you anything, if you check, Brother Light has got his pockets filled with tracks. Look at <laughs> Hey, Doc, have you got tracks on you? <laughs> you got it? You, you mean the only one we caught was a preacher? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> well, I knew I'd get him one day, and I finally did, amen? But you know, that's the truth. There's so many ways that we ought to look for lost people. Now, I don't know sign language, deaf. I, the only thing I know in deaf and, and, and sign is this. I love you. I think in Christ. And that's done. <laughs> that's all I know. I, I went in the restaurant. went in the hamburger place the other day with a preacher and I. And, and he caught it. Now, most preachers don't catch it. Now, I don't say this now in disrespect. I love preachers. If I didn't, I'd be out of the ministry. But most preachers are dumb when it comes to soul winning. They really are. We walked in in a hamburger place, and I, I, went, I went like that. And the lady said, uh, what did he say? <laughs> well, he said he asked you if you have ever been born again. And he's waiting for an answer. Well, she said, no, I haven't. I went through it again. <laughs> she said, what did he say then? He said he would like for me to show you how you can be born again. He's waiting for an answer. Well, she said, I'd, I'd like to be saved. So I went all through it again. <laughs> what did he say then? He told me to take my Bible and show you how you could be born again. And she said, well, go ahead. So he went ahead and showed her how to get saved, standing there waiting, and I went through all through it again. What did he say then? Well, he said for you to bow your head and receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior. And as soon as they bowed their head, and she asked the Lord to come in her heart and to save her, and the tears running down her face, and she said, I'm so thankful. Now, the only bad thing about that, I had to remain silent the rest of the time. <laughs> so there, there. <laughs> There's a million ways. I have a ruler here. It's a, it's a Polish ruler. Don't, <laughs> I'll have to explain it to you later. But it's white, and I'm always playing that thing. And I was out in the shopping center just a few weeks ago, and I had it out, and I've always got it like this, you know, playing with it. So I started to step up on the curb. A fellow walked up there, and it's white. He thought I was blind. He walked, up. he walked up and he said, can I help you? I said, well, yes, I'm out here trying to get people saved. And he said, I, I need the Lord. I need the Lord. Anybody could lead him to Christ. And after I got through, I said, sir, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to imitate a blind person. I just play this thing all the time. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. And he said, well, I'm glad that you had that out playing with it. Now, I could have passed him by, but I saw the need there. And I was looking for lost people. Most people don't want anybody. They don't see anybody. The only time they see anybody is when they get a card on them. And I'm not against that. I'm not against having a card going out to see somebody. I mean, you've got to be organized before you can mobilize, before you can evangelize. Let me say it again. You got to be organized before you can mobilize before you can abandon. Let me say it again. You got to be organized before you can mobilize before you can abandon. Let me say it again. You got to be organized before you can mobilize before you can abandon. Let me say it again. You got to be organized before you can mobilize before you can evangelize. You got to be what? Before you what? Before you what? I go in some churches are so unorganized it's pitiful. Now, I'm not against kids singing. I'm not against that. But they ought to be ready. They ought to be prepared. I go into church, they'll have a little girl up there to sing, and they haven't rehearsed or anything. And she gets up there in the piano player goes, two, 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 two. Is that the right key, hun? Hmm? <laughs> Is that it, hun? Hmm? Come over here, hun. Two, 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 two. You know what? That church will never run over a hundred. You know why? They're unorganized. Now, I go in some churches, they're over-organized. You get a menu when you walk in. <laughs> and you don't dare get off that menu. Now, I'm not against having a program, what you're going to do next. There's nothing wrong with that. There's not a thing wrong with that. I was in a church, it wasn't too long back. I asked the song leader, I said, uh, would you uh, have them to stand and sing Amazing Grace? Well, let's see, I got a song here, prayer. 
song. Hmm. I walked up. I said, it's going to be rough. Man. I wonder if we could erase this song here and put Amazing Grace in there. Yeah, we could do that. Now, what is that? That's being over-organized. I believe you've got to be organized before you can ever mobilize, before you can ever evangelize. But listen to me. We are overlooking lost people. I was in Florida in a meeting. I went with a preacher to make a call. And he had a card on the family. Nothing wrong with that. Went up to make the call, and you could see the people had moved. And he got ready to leave. Looked at his watch and see 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes over there, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes back. I said, is there a problem? Well, he said, I believe we heard we got time to make another call on the other side of town. Well, I said, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's uh, eight other apartments here. You just want them to go to hell. Is that right? Why don't we tell them? We don't have a card on them. <laughs> uh, go to hell! We don't have a card on you. Go to hell! We don't have a card on you. We had four families saved and baptized. Now, I don't know if they meant it or not. We didn't even have a card on them. <laughs> I mean, what is it? We pass people up. I was in Washington, D.C., and quite a few preachers and their wives, and my wife was with me on that trip and speaking engagements there, and we went over to see the Washington Cathedral, a beautiful place. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. How many of you ever been there? Washington Cathedral, beautiful place. And they have little chapels all through there. They have John's Chapel, Stephen's Chapel, and so on. And there was about 250 of us going through there. Well, man, I was having time in my life, which I embarrass preachers. I embarrass my wife. One of the reasons she don't like to travel me, I embarrass her. I embarrass preachers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, anyway, I was going down there, and a fellow walked up beside me, had a recorder and everything, and, and I said, this is... Uh, Catholic Church, and I said, I bet there's a lot of people get saved here, don't you? <laughs> yeah. He went on, another fella came up, and I said the same thing. He went on. Finally, I'm walking all by myself. My wife wouldn't walk with me. Preachers wouldn't walk with me. They had different statues in there. They had some had fingers. I just put a track between their fingers. People come by and read it. They had one laying down. I just laid it like that. People come by and read that track. They had pick it up and read it. I have a good time. So he's going all through there, you know, and this uh, the, the guy taking us through, and she's going through the chapel. She said, now, over here is a resurrection chapel. And I said, well, glory. But she said, we're not going to go over there. She's afraid I'd get excited. <laughs> we got out in the lobby of the, uh, the Washington Cathedral, and they have a little stand there where you register, and there was a priest standing over there, and I said, how are you, sir? He said, fine, thank you, fine, thank you. I said, are you uh, connected with this outfit? <laughs> well, he said, yes, I'm the leading father here. I speak on uh, uh, Friday and this on Thursday. I speak on Friday and I speak on Sunday. I'm the leading father here. I said, well, I know you like the Bible. He said, yes, I like the Bible. I said, let me show you something here I put together and I'll go through it briefly with you. Uh, straight from the Bible, what you should know. And I went straight from the Bible, went through this with him, and accepted the Lord as his Savior. I went over and told my wife and the other preachers, their wives, that I was just, I have just been born again. Could I have that? I said, yeah, I'll take it with you. He said, I want to share that with my people. And he went through that with all of his people. Now, what I'm trying to say, we ought to look for lost people. We pass them up. I remember years ago when I was here at the Anchorage Baptist Temple and we was in the old building over here, the Hilton had just been built. They only had one floor, I believe it was, or so anyway, I was staying there. And a fellow sat across from me. And uh, Brother Bill Light can remember this. I know the preacher can. And uh, the Lord kept saying, Carl, give him a track. And I'd get a track out, and the devil say, Carl, that's stupid. Put that back in your pocket. You're going to embarrass yourself. You're right, devil. You're right. And the Lord kept saying, Carl, give him a track. And I'd get a track out, and they'll say, Carl, put it back in your pocket. Finally, I just went over and I said, Sir, have you ever been saved? He was an elder man. He said, No, sir, I haven't. But I need to be. And I led him to Christ. He owned the little air base in Fairbanks, Alaska, and went over there and was uh, joined Brother Hamilton's church, was baptized, and the last count I had was still going to church over there. 
just because I took the time out to go cross just a little ways and give him a gospel track. We pass people up. Now, we ought to look for people. I was in Atlanta in the airport walking down through there, and there's a full colonel. And I said, how are you, colonel? He said, fine, thank you, fine, thank you. I said, my father is over the entire government. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says the government is on his shoulder. And we're on his shoulders. Amen. I said, would you like to meet him? He said, I sure would. We standing just outside the restroom. He said, is he in there? Oh, I said, no, he's standing right here. I said, would you like to meet him? Well, he said, I sure would. I'd like to introduce you to him. I took my soul in card and introduced him to the Lord. Now, what am I trying to say? We ought to look for lost people. I, I go around. I had a fellow stop me in the airport here a few weeks ago. And he said, hey, hey, Brother Hatch. Yeah, how would you know it was me? He said, I've been following you. I went in the restroom and found a track. I, I walked a little ways found another track. A little, I, said, I just followed the tracks. <laughs> I was going down through the Atlanta airport. And I was dropping tracks. And, and a fellow, sir, sir, you dropped something. What is it? I don't know. Huh. Something religious. God's simple plan. Huh. I dropped this? Yeah, he said, this is coming right out of your pocket. Huh. God's simple plan. Something religious. I guess something about religion in it. Yeah. You mean I, you mean I dropped this? He said, yeah, this, this fell right out of your pocket. Huh. You're kidding. He said, no, I just come right out. I said, well, wait a minute, let's go through it together. Wait a minute, let's go through it together. And he, he and I went through it together, and he got saved. Now, let me say this. You can't be me. You got to be who you are. You try to be Brother Hatch, and somebody will kill you. <laughs> I mean, you have got to be yourself, amen? You can't be somebody else. You got to be who you are. I was in Tennessee in revival, and, and uh, in Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, they don't use streets. They use roads and creeks and trees, and they don't use it. And I'm not exaggerating. This lady gave me an address, and she wrote on the card, you leave the church, and you go about a half a mile, and there's a red, that you go, you go across, there's an oak tree with a big trunk. And then you go about a quarter of a mile, there's a cypress tree on the left. It's got a smaller trunk than the oak tree. I'm not kidding. And she drew that out and she said, you go across the creek, not river, creek, go across the creek, about a quarter of a mile, there'll be a red truck in the driveway. Now that was my address. Go about a quarter of a mile, half a mile from the church. There's an oak tree on the right, got a big trunk, and you go down a quarter of a mile, cypress tree on the left, go across the creek, go about a quarter of a mile, half a mile, there's a red truck in the driveway. So that we took off. I told the fellow, maybe that's it. What? There's, there's a truck with some red hubcaps. Went over there and a fellow sitting on the front porch, and I said, uh, how are you, sir? He said, fine. I said, I'm looking for this fellow. Well, he said, I, I don't know him. Well, I said, we got to find him. Well, he, is there a problem? Well, I said, yes, sir. He's lost. <laughs> well, he said, uh, lost? I said, yes, sir. Well, how, how long has he been lost? I don't know, all indications, about 50 years. <laughs> I bet you're lost. Well, no, I've been, I live right here. But, but I bet you're lost. He said, no, I've been living here 35 years. But I bet you've never been born again. He said, I'm lost. He got saved and he called his wife, honey, honey, come here, come here. She come running out there and said, what is it? He said, you're lost. <laughs> she said, you're crazy. He said, You're, show her how she's lost. I said, I bet you've never been born again. She said, no, I'm lost. He got saved. She got saved. We left there. And I, oh, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. What? There's a truck with a, with a red hood. Went over there and knocked on the door, and the fellow came, and I said, I'm looking for this fellow. And he said, uh, I don't know him. I said, we've got to find him. Well, is there a problem? Well, I said, yes, sir. He's lost. He said, lost? I said, yes, sir. Well, my goodness, how long has he been lost? I said, I don't know, all indications, about 50 years. Well, he said, I'll get in the truck and go help you. I said, well, no, we'll find him. We're FBI's, we'll find him. 
We are LBIs. We find people. We get them saved, baptize them, introduce them, introduce them to the good church. L is find them, B is baptize them, I introduce them to the good church. We're LBIs. Amen. Now, to make a long story short, we had 14 families saved and baptized looking for a red truck in the driveway. <laughs> now, what I'm trying, listen, folks, we ought to look for lost people. We pass them up all the time. In that meeting in Tennessee, Brother Jerry Pease, we had a great meeting and the big storm came. I mean, it was a solid sheet of ice and, and a fellow take me back to Motel on a four-wheel drive and we stopped a man in the ditch and I, I told the fellow, go see if you got a chain. He came back over and I said, do you have a chain? And he said, well, yeah, I got a chain. I said, well, you, did you check him out? What, did you, what do you mean? Did you find out if he's saved or not? That's more important than a chain. Well, he's probably not. He's got a filthy mouth. Let's go check him out. Went back over there, and the man had his head on the stern wheel like this, dead. Two minutes time, was dead. That man's blood would be on that boy's hands because he didn't just leave the gospel track. We ought to look for lost people. Got to the motel, stand at the Holiday Inn, and people were laying around. I mean, we had 300 people stayed all night in the church, couldn't even get out. It was a solid sheet of ice, and they couldn't even move. And the, the lobby was filled with men, women, boys, and girls. They were screaming and hollering. And I thought, boy, this is an opportunity. I went over and I told the owner or the manager, I said, uh, I'm a minister here. And I said, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a word of prayer to try to help comfort these folks. Oh, he said, that'd be wonderful. Uh, folks, I'm a minister and I want to have a word of prayer. And you can see him begin to calm down. Uh, I usually read some verses before I pray. What do you think I read? I read the plan of salvation. I gave an invitation, had seven people saved. I was going back to my room, there's a set of doors here and a set of doors here and a man walking back and forth. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, is there a problem? I don't know how I'm going to get home. Oh, I can tell you how to get home. The way of the cross leads home. That man got saved. Next morning, my phone was ringing and they called and they said, is this the minister that was here last night? I said, yes, sir. He said, we got a whole new crew down here this morning. I don't know what you did, but will you come back and do it again? I said, yeah, I'll do it again. I went back and had another seven saved. You know what, it, what I'm trying? We overlook people. We pass people up. I was with a preacher in Arkansas in a meeting, driving down an old dirt road, and I said, stop. He said, stop. I said, you don't see anybody? No, I don't see anybody. Look to your left. Here's four people out here picking blackberries. I said, hey, come here. They come running over there, and I said, we're FBI's. <laughs> One of those fellas just got out of prison. He, boy, he threw his hand on the hood. He said, I'm clean. He checked me out. I'm clean. I said, no, we're FBI's. We're trying to find people to get them ready for heaven and get them saved. Have you folks ever been saved? He said, no, I'd like to be. I'd like to be. I'd like to be. I'd like to be. And all four of them got saved. Here come a man running down through there, and he said, what's going on? I said, these four people just got saved. He said, that's what I need. I get more people saved accidentally than most people do on purpose. That man got saved. Got back to the motel. My wife was with me on that trip. We stayed at Ramada Inn. And the next morning when I woke up, I had chiggers all over me. I was loaded with chiggers. Now, city folk don't call them chiggers. Yeah, how many knows what a chigger? Anybody ever have a chigger? Y'all had chiggers? Where are you from? New Jersey. You've had chiggers. <laughs> How many has never had a chigger? Never had a chigger. You never had a chigger? <laughs> you never had a chigger? I want to. We need to ask God. Give him chigger. Matthew eighteen nineteen says, if two people, <laughs> if two people agree on earth as touching anything that shall add, it shall be done for them. My Father which heaven. Let's ask God. Give them chigger. Now, that's a little old bug. But <laughs> you ever have a chicken? He said, I know he's had a chicken. He pastored in Tennessee. But that's a little old bug that gets under your skin, and you'll literally scratch yourself to death. And the next morning, I woke up. I had chickers all over me. Eyes loaded. You know what I'm getting at. Had. You haven't had a chicken? <laughs> oh, you got a lot of people never had a chicken. But I tell you, I had whips, and I mean, they, they love they love the calf your leg. Amen. And they love your belt line, and they, and they love the pity arm. Amen. And next one I woke up, I said, honey, I'm loaded. <laughs> she said, loaded? I said, I'm loaded. 
She said, what do you mean? I said, I got chiggers all over me. And my head whips underneath my arm. I said, oh, oh. She said, you better go get something. I took a couple of wash cloths and put one under each arm. And I said, I'm going over here. And I went over to a big old country store out there. It was, I mean, filled with people in there. And I walked in. And I said, fellas, I said, uh, what's good for chiggers? One fellow this, another fellow that. And finally, one fellow said, what? Did you get them fishing? I said, yeah, I got them fishing. Well, he said, did you do any good? Well, I said, yeah, I caught over, over a thousand pounds. <laughs> over a thousand pounds? I said, one of those chiggers, uh, one, of, one of those fish, I know one of those fish weighed 300 pounds. That was one of the biggest fish I ever seen. <laughs> you mean you caught over a thousand pounds? I sure did. And I know one of them fish weighed 300 pounds. He said, where in the world did you go? I said, in the blackberry patch. <laughs> and how did you catch them in a blackberry patch? And I went ahead and told them, and I said, how many of you right here, if you die, you go to hell? Hands begin to lift. I preached, gave an invitation, and had 14 men saved in that grocery store. You know why? I was looking for lost people. I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And man, I believe the biggest snowstorm I ever seen. I'm not exaggerating. You couldn't. I, we was driving down the street, and I told the preacher, I need to go to the shopping center. I said, uh, is there a place I could get some deodorant stuff? And he said, right over there. You couldn't even see the shopping center. They had snow pushed up. I just got back from Maine, and you talking about, listen, Anchorage, Alaska is summer all the time. I just got back from two, I was two miles from the Canada line. It was, this was just a few weeks ago. It was 40 below. We had a hot wave one day. It got 20 below. And that preacher said, you want to go soul winning? I said, well, preacher, excuse the expression. I said, they can go to hell. I ain't going soul winning. Man, I mean, it was cold. I don't know how them people lived up there. It was terrible up there. But anyway, in Minnesota, I was there and I was sitting in a restaurant waiting for my ride that morning. And how the fella got what he did, I'll never know. He's sitting over there. He owned the place. And he said, are you a businessman? Well, I said, I'm an evangelist. But she said, I want him to shake the hand that shook the hand that had his hand around her, Tom Selleck. <laughs> Tom Selleck hugged my wife. Isn't that all? She ain't got over it yet. <laughs> she foams at the mouth all the time. How many know... <laughs> <laughs> she, she's all, she got a picture. You ladies are to see it. Cost you a quarter. But she carries a picture in her, in her purse all the time, her and Tom Selly. Isn't that something? You never did kiss him. I don't, I don't guess. <laughs> I know you didn't, amen. But anyway, he, he said, and you're a millionaire. I said, yes, sir. He said, would you mind sharing with me how, how you become a millionaire? No, I'll be glad to. He opened the door for me. My goodness, I said, my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Everything he owns, I own. I'm an heir, joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm a millionaire. Amen. Now, what am I trying to say? We overlook people. I was with a preacher and I, and I went in here just a few weeks ago at a steakhouse and he gave a lady a track. And she, she said, oh, thank you. Thank you. I need that. He said, ma'am, if you read that, that will tell you how you can be saved. She said, oh, I want to be saved. Oh, I want to be saved. I'm not, that girl just begged that preacher to lead her to Christ. And he said, well, if you read that, if you'll do what it says, you can be saved. Oh, she said, I want to. I, I promise you, I promise you, I'll read it. I promise you. And I thought, folks, listen, do you know she could be dead before sunup in the morning? Do you realize that? Do you know you don't have any proof that you'll be living when the sun comes up in the morning? Folk, listen, we need to see this thing. People are dying, and they want somebody to help them. And you can reach people I'll never reach. I'll reach people you'll never reach. All you gotta do a lot of times, just give them a track. Man, I pass them out. I use the holidays. Let me give you a, a George Washington Day. I want to give you a Washington track. Lincoln Day, give you a Lincoln track. Easter, I want to give you an Easter gift. Christmas, I want to give you a Christmas gift. 
I mean, I use all the holidays in giving out a track. We went over and sat down. I'm sitting here, the preacher's sitting here, and the waitress, this lady, walked up to take our order at this steakhouse, whatever it was, and we, we was there waiting for her to take her order, and there's a spotlight like these, and I saw her boss, and the manager, and the assistant manager come and sit over here, and the light was shining like this, and I was sitting over here, and I said, man, I, could, I was waiting, is that preacher gonna ever lead her to Christ? Is he gonna ever show her how to be saved? And finally I could see he wasn't, and I said, ma'am, would you mind moving over just a little bit, that light is hitting me right in the face. Could you move over just a little bit? Now, let me ask you folks. I was wanting her to move. It wasn't cause the light was in my face. That wasn't the problem. You know why I wanted her to move? Can anybody tell me why I wanted her to move? Anybody? I wanted her to get and stop the view of her boss, the manager and the assistant manager. They were sitting over here and they could see me. Now I could have taken my soul winning card out and he'd have still wondered what I'm doing. And I had her to move over to block the view from him seeing me. And I said, ma'am, let me go through this briefly with you, what you need to know straight from the Bible. And I took that and led her to Christ. And here's what she said. She was crying. And she said, I was, I was afraid you, you preach. Aren't you a preacher? Well, he'd been there before. And he, and he said, yes, sir, and this is an evangelist. And she said, I was scared to death you wasn't gonna try to help me. I was scared to death you wasn't gonna try to help me. We pass people up all the time. I was in this meeting in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I had more illustrations happen in that meeting and there. The next morning I was getting ready to eat breakfast and I had a big snowstorm, a lot of truck drivers around. I could hear them talking about the weather they dreaded getting out on the road and uh, the highways were blocked in a lot of places. And I saw a truck driver bow his head and bless the food. I looked over and I saw another truck driver bow his head and bless the food. I heard him talking about the bad weather and I thought, here's an opportunity. And I said, fellas, I'm a minister and I hear you talking about the bad weather and if you don't mind, I'd like to have prayer and I would like to ask the Lord to protect you on the highway. Would you like for me to? I looked at the man that prayed and I knew he'd say, yeah! I looked at, yeah! I had it going. Every one of them lifted their hand. I said, I want to read some verses before I pray. What do you think I read? I read the plan of salvation. I went ahead and gave an invitation, had a number of those truck drivers say. Why? I was looking for lost people. We need to look for lost people. We pass them up. I spoke in, the, in a Christian school. They brought all the Christian schools in, had an auditorium seat about 2,500, and it was filled with all Christian kids in there. They brought them in for 50, 7,500 miles away and had me to speak to them. I went ahead and preached that morning and had 34 say. The next day, some preachers taking me out for dinner. We was going through the salad bar line. The fellow in front of me, I guess he recognized a southern accent, and he said, uh, he said, are you here vacationing? I said, no, not, not really. Are you here on a fishing trip? Well, I said, yes, sir. Well, how's fishing? Well, I said, had a good day yesterday. Caught 3,400 pounds yesterday. 3,400 pounds. Man, you had a day. I said, yes, sir, I really did. 3,400 pounds. Had a good day. Had a good day. He said, man, where are you? you must have fished for hours to catch that many fish. And I, and, and I please don't misunderstand what I'm gonna say. I, I mean, God uses me to go and motivate preachers and teach preachers, and I'm not, I'm not up here criticizing preachers, but a lot of preachers, and I don't mean this the way it sounds to be smart, but a lot of preachers, they're just dumb when it comes to soul winning. I don't mean that the way it sounds to be a smart aleck, but uh, God uses me to help them and motivate them and teach them. And I, I said, I didn't call him preacher. I said, uh, the fellow said, man, you must have fished for hours to catch that many fish. I asked him, Preacher, how long do you think I fished? Catch that many fish? Uh huh. I said, How long do you think I fished? Catch that many fish? Huh. I could see he didn't get it, so I said, I'll just draw out a pulpit. Uh, how long do you think I fish? Oh, he said, About 45 minutes. And that fella said, Man, where did you go? Come here, I'll show you. See that light down there? He said, yeah. I said, turn right. 
And on the left, there's the best fishing hole in town. Well, he said, I've been living here all my life. I didn't even know there's a lake there. <laughs> I said, best fishing hole in town. He said, I'd like to see that. I said, come on. We got in the car and went down and turned right, and I said, right there it is. Well, he said, that's a church. I said, yes, sir. But inside that church is the best fishing hole in town, and it's open to the public. And we got in there, and it had, a, had an altar all across that auditorium. And I said, right here, 34 people got saved right here yesterday. I bet you've never been born again, have you? He said, no. I said, you can be the 35th one. And he was the 35th one. Now, what am I trying to say? We pass people up all the time. I was in Yak of all Washington. I just closed a meeting with Dr. Brown there. Had a tremendous meeting. This happened about three or four years ago. And we was registering in the motel. A man, uh, I didn't know it was his wife then, was standing there. And I said, how are you, sir? He said, fine, thank you. I said, you here vacationing or something? He said, no, I'm here. We're competing for the world championship uh, uh, volleyball or something. I forget what it said. And I said, is that right? He said, yes, sir. I said, I'm a minister, and I'm starting a, a revival here with Dr. Brown. And I said, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to have prayer and ask God to protect your team. Would you do that? Oh, I'd be glad to. Let me read some verses before I pray. I read some verses to he and his wife, and standing there in the lobby of the motel, he and his wife accepted the Lord as her Savior. Listen, uh, they had a big Greyhound bus out there and had the team out there, had nine fellows out there. I said, let me go out on the bus and, uh, and ask God to protect your team. Well, yeah, it'd be fine. I went out there and I said, folks, uh, uh, your, your coach and his wife want to tell you, well, go ahead and tell them what happened. They said, we just got saved. We just got saved. How many of you fellas right here on the bus, you, you have never really truly been born again? Could I see your hand? One man, I have, I have. And the other seven lift their hands and I, I've never been saved. I've never been born again. I'd like to be. I went ahead, read the scriptures, gave an invitation. All seven of them got saved. And the coach said this. He said, uh, tomorrow, whether we win or whether we lose, we're gonna stay and hear you preach tomorrow night. Now, they not only stayed the next night to hear me preach, but they all were there and were baptized in that church. Why? Because I was looking for lost people. We ought to look for people. These people that want to be saved. Amen? Let me hurry along because time's running out. Let me give you, let me give you another one. I've been going to Brother Jim Rushing, Dr. James Rushing, for many years in Atlanta, Georgia. Last year I was there, we had from Sunday through Sunday, we had 3,250 some odd slaves Sunday through Sunday. And that's not ministerially speaking. That's a name and address of 3,250 some odd slaves. I've been going there in 11 years. You read it in the paper. I've been going there for 11 years and they had a big write up on it. We've had 35,000 saved in 11 years. When I started going there, I had a handful of people. We have three times as many out going out so many now as what they was running or more than that when I went there the first time. We started a black church, I forget how, it was quite large in one week. We were downtown. In fact, when I was down there, I witnessed to Burt Reynolds and Brian Keith and Marty Holman. I gave every one of them a gospel track and stood there and went through the plan of salvation with them when I left there, Marty Holman, Brian Keith, and, and uh, who did I say the other one was? Burt Reynolds. You can tell I'm laughing if I like it. And they were all standing around reading those tracks together when I left there. We were downtown, and I, I got on the city bus. And the man said, you got any money? I said, I don't need any money. You don't need any money? I said, no, my father owns a bus line. And he's asked me to get on every bus and have prayer. Well, he said, go ahead. Well, I want to read some verses before I pray. Uh, folks, let me read these. I went ahead and read the verses, gave an invitation, had 29 saved on that bus. Another bus pulled up there. I got off this bus, got on that bus, and the fellow said, did you get on the wrong bus? I said, no, I was on the right bus. I got to get on every bus. He said, you do? I said, yeah, my father owns a bus line. I got to get on every bus. He said, you do? I said, you sure do. I said, he told me to get on every bus and have prayer. He said, well, get with it. 
I want to read some verses before I pray. I read some verses and had prayer and gave another invitation. To make a long story short, we had 78 saved and baptized 37 off those city buses. Why? I was looking for lost people. We need to see that people need to be saved. People want to be saved. People are hungry to be saved. You say, why? Because Jesus, when he said, when he was looking over the village, notice what he said. I want you to get this. All kinds of people. Now, I want you to get it. And he said in John, when he said, I'm looking for lost people, look what he's looking for. All kinds of people. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, notice what happened. He was moved with compassion. Listen to it now. To the, on them. Because they fainted, they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He went on to talk about his harvest being white, but the laborers are few. What am I trying to say? He has already, when he left heaven's glory, he was looking down upon you. The only reason Jesus left heaven was for people. The only reason he died was for people. The only reason he rose was for people. Everything he did was for people. Think about that. If you're here tonight and you have never been saved, the only thing brought Jesus down from heaven was you. The only thing that took him to the cross was you. The only thing that took him to the grave was you. The only thing that brought him out of the grave was you. And the only thing that bring him back will be you. Did you ever think about that? He has paid your sin debt. If you're here tonight and you have never been saved, what a tragedy it would be. What a tragedy it would be to hear all these illustrations and die lost without the Lord Jesus. I could go on and on and on. I had a whole, I don't know how many illustrations. I didn't even touch them tonight. I could go for hours on illustrations. But what a tragedy it would be for me to go through all these illustrations and you're here tonight, die lost. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be terrible? I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. You can be saved. All that come unto me, I will in no wise cast out. He loves people. For God so loved the world. The world is not the buildings. The world is not the Hilton. The world is not Holiday Inn. The world is not the Anchorage Baptist Temple. The world is the people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What a tragedy be for you to die lost hearing these illustrations. I don't care if you're a Baptist, a Methodist, or a Catholic. I don't care who you are. You carry the tag, but you have never really, truly been born again. I wish I could give you for hours of the different outstanding church members been saved under my ministry. Folk, this is a great church. And I go to some great churches. I got a, a brand new videotape in, the, in one of the 10 largest churches in America where I made it. And you'll see when you watch that video, hundreds of people coming down to receive Christ as their Savior. And many of them were bankers, members of the church. Many of them were uh, congressmen, senators, and so on. I want to say to you here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who you are or what you are, Jesus loves you. He paid your sin debt. Already paid for. I want to share this tonight in closing. A true story of the lady that left her apartment on the third floor and went down three or four blocks to have coffee or tea or something and left a newborn baby girl lying in the bed. And she stayed longer than she'd intended to. She came out and looked up the street and the building was going up in flames. And the first thing she thought about was my baby daughter. It's on the third floor. And the firemen were there putting the water on the building and she run to the top rate of speed and got there and started in the building and the firemen said, you can't go in. She said, I gotta go in. My baby's on the third floor. I've gotta go in. You can't go in there. I've gotta get in there. She said, my baby's there on the third floor. I gotta get in there. 
fireman said, ma'am, I have children. I'll go to the third floor. I'll go to the third floor and get your baby. And he went to the third floor and he got that little baby in his arms and cuddled that little baby in his arms and getting ready to go down the stairs and the stairs collapsed and he's standing there and the floor was getting ready to go down. And he had a choice to go down and the baby with him in the flames or throw the baby out on the net. And he threw the baby out on the net and the fireman went down in flames. Years later, that baby girl grew up to be a fine young lady and she went out to the cemetery and stood there at the grave and wept and people came by and said, that must be your mother. And she said, no. It must be your father. And she said, no. It must be one of your own children. And she said, no. It must be a brother or sister. And she said, no. And they said, who is it? And she said, the man lying in that grave gave his life that I could have life. And I say to you here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he gave his life that you could have life. He emptied himself that you could be made full. He's paid your sin debt. And all you have to do is receive the gift. Like when I give somebody a track, they have a choice to receive it or reject it. And tonight you have the choice to receive him, to receive him and make heaven as your home or reject him and choose an eternal hell. I hope you got enough judgment in your heart tonight to say I want heaven as my home. Then I want to say to you Christians tonight, how many times do you pass people by? How many times do you know that you have the opportunity and you don't go? I don't know how many you have out soul winning on your soul winning night. I'd say probably two or three or four hundred. Maybe more than that. I don't know. But I wonder how many times that we pass people up. When you know that they'd like to be saved, you're not going to get everybody saved. Brother Hatch don't win everybody. I haven't told you the times I've been cussed out. I haven't told you these times. That wouldn't motivate you. That'd discourage you. Certainly it's not all easy. But I'll tell you one thing, folk. If you put an effort to it, God will bless you for it. If you say, Lord, I'm available. I haven't been doing what I ought to do. I haven't been passing out tracks like I ought to. I haven't been talking to people like I ought to. God help me to do it. God help me to do it. Some of you men on your job, some of you men in the service, you pass opportunities up when no one else could reach them but you. Just a simple handing out a gospel tract or just simply saying, have you ever been born again? Have you ever been saved? Wouldn't you like to go to heaven? Let's don't pass anybody up. Let's take the opportunity to pass out a gospel tract. I wish you, I, I could stand here for an hour and a half, two hours, and give you illustrations of people that's been saved just through a gospel track, just through picking up a track and reading it. Brother Bill Light, remember years ago, been, it's, been, it's been 12, 15 years ago, if you remember, we stopped in a bus stop. They had these little huts. I don't see them here now like they had years ago. Had little huts where you'd step in there when it was cold and wait for a bus. Brother Bill Light and I were out soul winning. And we had, you had some green tracks then that uh, looked like, that wasn't look like money is green, and we stuck it in a crack. And we was out visiting the next day, and knocked on the door, and a lady called Brother Light and I everything but a human being. I mean, she said, I'm sick of the Anchorage Baptist Temple. I get sick of that church. Brother Bill and I, we would getting ready to leave, man. We'd had all we could take. And a man back in there, huh? wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is it? Oh, it's that bunch from the Anchorage Baptist Temple. They were here all the time. Don't run them off. Don't run them off. Come on in. Brother Light and I went in there and you could see where that man had taken a pocket knife. He'd taken a pocket knife and he said, I was stopped at a bus stop and this was pushed in a crack and somebody had come along and read that and pushed it all the way back in and you could see where he'd taken his knife and pried that out. And he said, I want to be saved. I think Brother Light led him to Christ. One of us, I can't remember. Remember that? I could stand here for two hours and give you illustrations happening right here at Anchorage Baptist Temple. You know what's built this church? 
You know what's built old Anchorage Baptist Temple? What I'm talking about tonight. That's what's built this church. You know how you got to 2,000 or 1,700 or whatever? You know how you got to that? What I'm talking about tonight. You know how to go to 3,000? Keep doing what I'm talking about tonight. Keep doing what I'm talking about tonight. Let's quit passing them up. I really thank God, Doc, Dr. Brock. I thank God. I've had a little bit of a part in this church. And I'm so thrilled and honored God's given me that privilege. But let's take the old Anchorage Baptist Temple right on up to 2,500, 3,000. We can do it if everybody will just do a little bit of what I'm talking about tonight. Don't pass anybody up. Let's bow our head, please.